But the biggest surprise is the <laughs> so-called introduction to the fourth symphony. You know, he has been waiting years long, years, years long, before he finally allowed himself to publish this uh, symphony. Now, I had the mm, fortune to know about this, this, this mysterious four extra bars, which announced the preparation to the theme, see, soul, Mm -hmm. of the violins of the fourth and uh, and finally I got the copy of the manuscript you know which I bought and I studied and there I discovered that uh, at the end of the last bar of the first movement in the same page he had an afterthought why don't I start the symphony with four extra bars which prepared that melody which is mirrored with the harmonies of the last four bars of the movement so I thought, okay, now I want to have that. So I asked to put it on print by a computer and we perform it, we record it. Uh, I don't dare to do it in public because I think this might raise with rights a lot of discussions. Because he did it. He put a nota bene on the bottom saying this bar should go, and look at the typical X with a surrounded X, as at the beginning of the piece, but later on he put some lines on it, like saying, no, abandon the idea. So he had double conflictual uh, thoughts about it. But it's interesting to know that, because when you do play those four bars, you suddenly discover that the, the melody was not really, at, at least in an afterthought, born as this phenomenal incipit of something that out of nothing starts. It was a consequence of a chorale for bars. At the end, I completely in agreement with the, the genius of Brahms that the originality is the idea to start from nothing with those two notes. I mean, there is nothing more genial and more new at the time. But still today, talking about Brahms, we have to know this thing. And uh, I am proud to have these extra elements of getting closer to the, the music of Brahms because it's worth it, I think, at the end.